Thank you very much for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about the new production management module and how to create work tickets. Let's take a look at our agenda. So the first thing we're going to talk about is work ticket templates. Then we'll talk about bill of materials and the actual work ticket entry. Let's go ahead and take a look at Sage 100. So here we are in Sage 100 and we're going to take a look at templates. When you create a work ticket, you can create the work ticket from the template. So we're gonna go into production management, setup, and then work ticket template maintenance. And I'm just going to do a lookup and take a look at templates that we've already defined. So as you can see here, each template has a template number. It can have a revision number, and then there are a series of steps. So each template has to have a minimum of one step, but you can have a lot of steps based on the size of the field. And each step will define the work that's going to be performed and define a budgeted number of hours for that work, which will then be used to calculate the budgeted costs for the work ticket. And then you can also associate material with each step. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this one step. So this is a step where the description is to assemble the chassis. We'll go to the additional tab and you can see that we have an hour scheduled for this particular step. And we'll go to the materials tab and you'll see that there are no materials assigned to this step. And that's because we're going to use bill of materials for the materials portion of our work ticket. But I want you to know that you can have materials on your template as well. In fact, you don't have to have bill of materials at all to use production management. You can have all of the material associated with a template. So let's go ahead and close that. So back on our agenda, the next thing we're going to talk about is bill of materials. Let's take a look at Sage 100. So in Sage 100, we'll go to bill of materials. We'll go to bill of materials maintenance. And I'll do a look up here and I'm going to call up this desktop 00100 bill. And as you can see here, we have the template that is associated with this bill defined. And we can do a look up and we can see a list of all the templates that have been defined over in production management. And we've associated the template with this particular bill. Then at the line level, we have indicated what material is going to be used, either sub assemblies or just inventory items or phantom bills or whatever we're using here associated with this particular bill. For each of these items, you can see that we've designated which step from the template each of these materials are going to be used. Let's go ahead and close this out. Back on our agenda, we're going to go ahead and take a look at various options for creating the work tickets. First, we'll do a manual entry. We'll copy from bill of materials, copy from a template, copy from a work ticket, and then copy from history. So we'll talk about all of these. In Sage 100, I'm going to go to Production Management, Work Ticket Entry, and I'm just gonna create a work ticket manually. We're gonna start with one that's done manually. So we're gonna hit the pound sign for the next work ticket number. It's gonna pull in our project management, production management's accounting date as our date. The status will be open, and we'll just choose our item that we're going to produce. And I'll go ahead and do this desktop 00100. And we will designate the parent warehouse, materials warehouse, and the quantity that's ordered. And let's just do a quantity of one. And we'll change the yield percent to 100 so we don't have some math going on here. So as you can see, there's a number of other options about auto issuing labor, auto issuing material. If these are checked, then labor and material will be issued at the time that we release the work ticket, which we'll talk about at another time. And we're going to go ahead and make this item for inventory. So now let's go to the steps. So as you can see, there are no steps. So we have to create the steps. Each work ticket has to have a minimum of one step. So we'll use the pound button for next step number, and that'll just be 10. 
And then we can designate the work that's going to be done, the activity code, the work center, those kinds of things. And it's just chosen for us automatically, the first work center and the first activity code. And we can put in a budget and number of hours for this step, which will calculate a labor cost. And then we can go to the materials and we can specify what material we're going to use. Let's just choose this battery and what step we're going to use it on and how many are required. We'll just say there's one of these required and on down the line. So we can manually create the work ticket by manually creating the steps and manually putting the material on it. Let's go ahead and cancel this. Now we're going to do one from Bill of Materials. So here we are in work ticket entry. We're gonna create a new work ticket so once again, I'll just say next work ticket number. I'll choose the same item code for the work ticket. Once again, we'll do a quantity of one, 100% yield. So it's going to create one. I'll deselect those options. But this time, instead of going to the steps of the materials tab, we're going to use the copy from button. And we're going to copy from bill of materials and the bill number is the same. Now notice that it defaulted to copy from bill of materials and that's because it recognized that there is a bill for this particular item. Now, even though we're not copying from the template, because the bill is referencing the template, it's going to use the template as well. So really what's going to happen here is it's going to create the steps from the template and it's going to assign the material from both the bill and the template. So if you have some of the material on the bill and some of the material on the template, it's actually going to combine those both into the work ticket. So let's go ahead and accept that. I have an option on the bill. We'll go ahead and indicate that and accept again. And we'll go to the steps tab and notice that we have all of the steps here. Once again, they came from the template. So in this particular case, we have 15 steps. And if we go to the materials tab, you'll notice that we have the material that was brought in from the bill. I'll go and pull the description up here so you can see what they are like that. So very simple to create a work ticket using bill of materials. Let's go ahead and cancel this. Go to the next example. So once again, I'll create a new work ticket. Once again, the same item code. We'll put in a quantity of one, 100%. Now we're gonna do a copy from, but instead of bill of materials, we're gonna copy from a template. And then it's gonna ask us what template we're gonna copy from. And I'll obviously use the desktop. Now notice that it defaulted to that because again, it does recognize there's a bill and there's a template associated with it, actually an in inventory item maintenance. So we'll use that template we'll say accept. Now we'll go look at the steps and you'll see that there are the 15 steps from the template. But we'll go to the materials and you'll see there are no materials. That's because we didn't copy from the bill of materials. So it didn't pull the material in from the bill. It would pull in the material from the template if I'd associated any material on the template itself. But since I did not do that, it doesn't pull any material in. Let's cancel that. Two more examples and we'll be done. Let's go ahead and create another work ticket. Pick my item first. And we'll put in a quantity, 100%. This time we're gonna copy from another work ticket. So we can copy from other work tickets as well. So these are work tickets that may be open and are still being worked on. As long as they haven't been closed, we can copy from them. Closed and, and moved to history, we can copy from them. So if we have work tickets that we're working on and we wanna duplicate that or at least pull that in, we can always edit these after they have been brought in. So we can copy from another open work ticket. Obviously, 
our last example is copying from history. So once again, I'll pick the item. And we'll do a quantity of one. And then we'll copy from closed work tickets. So if the work ticket has been closed, you can copy from the closed work ticket. I don't have any. So as you use production management and you close the work ticket and they get moved into history, you can then copy from those as well. So if you have a work ticket that you worked on in the past, does not have to be for a particular customer or anything like that. You can just copy that work ticket as well. So if you're happy with that, uh, after all the adjustments and things like that, you can copy from essentially a historical work ticket. So once again, we talked about work ticket templates, how to create the templates, looked at what can be involved with the templates in terms of steps and material, and then in work ticket entry, we can manually create a work ticket. We have to have at least one step, but we can also copy from bill of materials. We can copy from templates, we can copy from other work tickets, and we can copy from history. Thank you very much for your attention today. You can find us on our YouTube channel. We're on LinkedIn. Our website is www.nimsassociates.com. And you can contact us at NIMS and Associates at ERP at NIMSAssociates.com or the phone number 877-454-3200, extension 6346. Thank you very much.